The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us. We have the Dow Industrials down 152. You get the Nasdaq off 30. S&P's down 8.5. Gold contract up $8.50, trading at 13.04 an ounce. You get silver up 11 cents, $15.20 an ounce. Light sweet crude. Up 78 cents, $63.85 a barrel. That thing is uh, pushing higher. It sure is, man. $64. We just missed it by a penny a few minutes ago. Yeah. Notes and bonds. You get the 10 year note uh, down one tick, 123.18. 30 year down six, 147.24. They both continue to uh, reject lower price, folks. Uh, went to, they went down last week, bottom line Friday, rejected lower price, had lighter volume, went back into their strength. We'll see what they can uh, do now. King Dollar, King Dollar down 382 ticks, still no sellers. We, we pull this up. This is like pretty amazing, actually, because when we take a look at this, folks, what you're going to see is that you get at highs, you have, we've had no sellers or buyers, okay, but the bottom line is you're at, you're at higher price. And you can see it's like, okay, so your March 7th high, I can't do the volume there because we were on a different contract, yes. okay, but that's 97.16. You can see uh, last week we, we got to 97. You had 13,000 contracts. Yeah, about 14. Yeah. Right, right, right. Then we come down with 12,000. Yeah. We try to get higher with 10,000, and today you get seven. So bottom line is that, you know, the bulls and bears are still fighting. Uh, but to get lower price, you need a lot more volume. 7,000 is nothing. Uh, that means it's going to do like 15,000 out here today. Uh, Euro, Euro's trading out at uh, 112.70. You get the yen at uh, 111 and uh, uh, 38. The pound is at uh, 130.52. So, another week. Uh, first time we've had red in a bit. Yeah, starting it off on negative tone. Yeah. Got a couple things going on in terms of, uh, as I said in the update, right? You got Bowen pulling back on some harsh news, some downgrades. Uh, GE pulling back on some downgrade. Yeah, Bowen's got a good gap down. That's I mean, the news talking about six to nine months potentially versus two weeks. Right. Um, quite a shift. Huge. Yeah. Huge. And uh, that seems to make a lot more sense in terms of the regulators getting back involved pretty heavily, going over everything again. Because um, if they put those planes back in the sky in two weeks, myself, <laughs> I, right? Exactly. So how does that make any sense? So maybe in nine months after testing, testing, yeah. testing, people might feel okay. I'd feel a little bit better. Right, a little better. Yeah. 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 So we'll see. Uh, GE, GE just continues to have uh, accounting problems. Okay. What this is about, folks, is that now GE had already disclosed that they knew they were going to get fined on this. Uh, but the bottom line is that uh, they basically weren't clean on wh what happens when you're uh, in the European countries have a whole different set of regulations when you're doing a, a merger. And one of the biggest ones of this is how many jobs are going to be lost um, or not lost, right? And GE just continues to basically, <laughs> in this particular case, they got fined 58 million, and they got fined because of the aspect of how they felt and what they were going to do after they took over this uh, wind energy component maker. Okay. Bottom line is that uh, they, they, their Alstrom deal, which is the largest, which was one of the largest oil companies, they took over in uh, France, right? Bottom line is that the same, same thing. They claim that all these people were still going to work there, and the bottom line, they didn't. Can we go back to the news for them? Because yeah. I know there's yeah. a big analyst at J.P. Morgan that also came in with a downgrade. Yes, he did. That was, right. I think, a bigger factor in what's going on today in that stock versus just a $58 million fine. Um, the bear is back. <laughs> so uh, Steve Tusa, I guess. He's made yeah. quite a name for himself somehow. Uh, so, yeah, he was ahead of it, I guess, when they um, really hit some tough times. And uh, renewed his call to sell with the downgrade to underweight. Um, and there you go. Investors are underestimating the severity of the challenges and underlying risks while overestimating the value of small positives. Yeah. They, they, they have a lot of legacy issues. 
they have still more accounting issues uh, in an intense way. Let's get over to the gold contracts. We take a look at gold. So last week in the gold contract, bottom line is that you rejected lower price. You went right back into the uh, strength that was developed out there January 25th. And we get traction out here today. So it's going to be interesting watching this uh, whole thing set up. You know, what we did have last week, even in spite of gold pulling back, the XAU, the HUI, they, they held pretty good. So uh, you get the GDX at 22.69. And for you folks that are in this market, now this is what you want to watch because this is pretty amazing how this is set up. So the XAU, as well as the HUI, <clears throat> they had a huge sign of strength last Thursday. Okay. And that's, that's with, when gold was still down, the dollar is still at highs, right? But you had big buying coming in. Now, when you put this on a weekly, this very well could be a large ABC structure on the way up. And I suspect we're going to be gunning for this swing high. I suspect we're actually gunning for it this week, which is, and the XAU is 80.76. And if it is, and the ABC up, they're, they're monsters. You know, the, the B point would be 87.6. Your, your A point is uh, 61, you know, 61.35, you know. So you're talking about, uh, what, $19, which would get you uh, up into the uh, $90 level. And 92 is the highs that were generated out here on the, uh, in January of uh, 2018. And the Gold Bugs Index is set up the exact same way. So it's going to be intriguing watching this whole thing shake out, you know. Uh, gold Bugs is at 172. You take this, and you can see, you know, I mean, for the amount of volatility that we had, well, we went from 1365 down to, I'll, I'll get the number, but I forgot what, what the low was last week. But you can see... When you look at this on a weekly basis, it doesn't even, you know, it looks like it's been a sideways move. Sure. So you didn't have a big retracement. We're looking at the Gold Bugs Index now, folks. And this also is a huge A to B. Your B point is 180 and your A is 131. Yeah. You know, and, and in that case, what is that, 50, 49, right? Yeah. Brings you up to 210 and two, 220 two, is the high. Yeah, 220 is the high of September. Of yeah. 2017. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's going to be pretty wild watching this whole thing shake out. And of course, um, yeah, one of the targets is saying this is a big deal if you are inside the gold market. Is that what has happened is that, let me see if I can get the story because it's a good story. It's uh, that China has been buying gold hand over fist um, and disclosing it. Top one. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So you get, uh, let's see. Gold had the biggest gain in the month in China's steady pace of bullion purchases. Okay, China expanded its gold reserves for the fourth month, reinforcing speculation that the central banks will continue to build holdings. I'm looking for the exact number. Yeah. They, ha they have the exact number, and it's a big number, folks, okay? And it's been a big number every month. And the last time that this actually happened is the last big run that we had in gold, which is 2016. So they're saying that then they... Boosted reserves by 11.2 million tons in March to 60.2 million tons of gold. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's one I just hit. Is that the one I just Maybe hit? Maybe that's yeah. it. Uh, yeah. That's the one I just hit. We well, can pull it up. Bottom line is that that's what it takes, too. It takes physical buy-in inside the marketplace to get it at higher price. Dow Industrials down 140, Nasdaq off 26, S&P's off 7.5. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow Industrials down uh, 114, NASDAQ off 24, S&P's off 6.5. And, and so when we were talking about China and the central bank, uh, let's see. So they increased their gold reserves for the fourth consecutive month and continue the major spree in the buying of precious metals. Okay, so they increased it uh, 60 0.62 million ounces a March. They increased it to 60.62. Oh, okay, okay, uh, okay. And it looks like they had 60.26 uh, from February, so uh, quite 11 million. I'm not sure about that, but uh, central banks added 651 tons of gold to their reserves in 2018, kind of just jumping around to different points yeah. in there. That's according to the World Gold Council. This has been... Uh... Yeah, China and Russia, two of the world's largest purchasers. Yeah. Russia, the buying is part of an attempt by Putin to move away from the dollar dependence. In China, they get some weak dollar action in there they're talking about. I know. You know what's so funny is that sometimes what happens in this article says, it says the weaker dollar is supporting Chinese demand, but, but the dollars are at highs, folks. That's what's, Sometimes when you read this, it's like, okay, okay so how do you get that one in there? Yeah. You know I mean, but that, it is what it is, you know. But they, 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 if you're in the metals market, folks, this is a good thing. That's what you want. You, you want buying versus selling. That's what it comes down to. What I don't quite understand sometimes is that why they even disclose it all. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, this no. is just from their, their website in terms of the central bank. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think with that weaker dollar, they're just talking about that shift from Powell in the last three or four months in particular. Um, as that's pulled back on the shift in rates, right? Lower rates. You're not going to go into getting those 
interest rates as much if you're getting lower rates, so that, that might cause a shift to the gold. It, it I think should. That's the point. No, it, but that's it, the it point. Should, that's but the dollar is still at highs. I mean, you know, that's you know, but there's no doubt that if you the, the lower this, the, the argument. 20 years ago, it was always you don't want to own gold because it doesn't pay interest. <laughs> well, yeah, know? 20 years ago it was the interest rate, though, right? As in it was huge. Oh, no. that was the point. That's, yeah. that's my point. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, the, the reality is is that arguments always shift. That's what it seems like. You know what I'm saying? Because half the, I mean, there's trillions of dollars in negative interest rates right now. So, you know, it would be like, okay, then why isn't gold higher, you know? Um, I'm, I'm, my, my take is we're going higher, but it's, it's interesting how that whole dynamic plays out because we've been in a low interest rate environment for a long period of time. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. We take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here today, and we'll see whether we're going to get any volume in this market. You get GE. That's down sixty five cents. That's the highest volume out here today. You get uh, Roku is down at two bucks. That's been getting hit. Yeah, a little. Roku. Yeah. So. That's not bad, no. So that was at all-time highs uh, only about uh, three weeks ago. It's 74 bucks. Is that all-time highs? That's one. Yeah. $77. Okay. You got, uh, we're still in the United States here. Yeah, you get, uh, let's see. So, oh, Boeing's the big one. Boeing's 14 bucks. That's, yeah, that's, that's getting nailed, man. That's definitely getting nailed. And, of course, all we have to do is look inside the Dow Industrials to find out uh, what is pulling that baby down. And we know it's going to be Boeing. There yeah. you go. Out of 111 points, <laughs> Boeing's 98 negative. Look at that. Yeah. Um, you get Procter & Gamble putting six positive, Home Depot six, Dow DuPont six, Exxon four. Uh, if we do go over to that uh, oil market, this oil market still looks like it wants to go higher, which is pretty wild. We got we we hit 64 even today. Okay. And it really, you know, it's it it got over. You know, we traded at this level five days, four days last <coughs> week. Excuse me. You know, it's, it jumped up another level. So it's like you know, it's like 65. Looks to me like game here, man. Um, you get 419,000 contracts. Now that is light contract volume for this time of the day. You know, because oil, what happens in the oil market is that it seems like this contract volume comes in really early in the oil market. Okay. So we'll see where that shakes out. But And that's going to be, um, there's a lot of different moving parts on this one, but over in Libya, there, where is the Libya deal? This, this, <coughs> this is really Excuse intriguing. Me. I was reading this this morning. So here it is here. So Libya, you know, you got uh, one of the warlords that are basically looking to, go take over Tripoli. Um, and the thing that's amazing, okay, so this was where Gaddafi was. We took Gaddafi out, right? They've been in the civil war since then. The thing that's crazy, though, when I was reading this, is that, that the warlord, right, is an American citizen. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, Pompey's telling him, hey, you better stay out of Tripoli. But this is what's pushing oil this morning. That's, what, that's what's going on here also. Uh, Oil production facilities not immediately at risk from the conflict. The country's biggest oil affairs are 700 kilometers south of Tripoli, and most of the others are far to the east. Um, but <laughs> it's like these countries, man, it's like it was... Political you know, turmoil, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely Big at risk. Time. And Libya is a... Let's see. Any loss of uh, Libya oil supplies will add to the tightness of global markets. You know, because Libya is a big, big supplier, man. I don't know who gets yes. all the money, but <laughs> yeah, you know. So they're fighting over those warlords. Yeah, yeah, big time, right? Big time. Middle of a desert, big tub of oil. Who's gonna get it? That's right. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If we go over and we take a look at those uh, notes and bonds, bottom line is that uh, they're hanging tough. You know, they're they're still in a higher range. The higher range being anything really above one twenty three oh ten. We got. Uh, down to 123.08 Friday, rejected it, and you're going to see that it had lighter volume than the breakout area. You know, you got, you're going into, uh, look at that, 2.5 million, and you did 1.3. Now, bottom line is that uh, we'll see where this uh, baby wants to go. We're 2.5 right now on your 10 year. Okay. You know? Yeah. And then. Um, 
We're going to be into earnings before we know it, right? Yeah, Friday. It starts uh, the banks. Oh, really? Yeah. J.P. Morgan. I believe so. So let's take a look. Well, it's not a bad setup. So J.P. Morgan is uh, just a sideways move out here. Yeah, the 12th. There you go, right? Friday. Yeah. So banks will kick it off. We'll see uh, how this whole thing uh, shakes out. You got... It's trying to get into those highs of uh, 108. You're at 105.40 right now. This consolidation has been out there since, what, December? Yeah. When we came down, it's quite a move uh, down in December. And then you got, so we had the, and you know, we, Jim had the final four of the, the men's in, uh, we had the final four of the women's. I, I think, know. Was, I didn't even a, realize that last week. I realized we it over the, the weekend. the final four here, yeah. Yeah, they played out the well, finals last night, and I believe right. Baylor got it you done. Might, uh, yeah, by yeah. one point. Was that okay? One point. Oh, my God. These basketball games are so close. That, that must be just like one point. Yeah. And I don't know if you saw the some of the semifinal games for the men on Saturday, but, man, they were amazing competitions. Virginia um, versus Auburn was just an incredible finish. Yeah, yeah, back and forth, back and forth. Oh, yeah. We can tell you, yeah. The one player hit a three-pointer with like six seconds left, and then somehow they had the ball back with a second and a half, and he got fouled. So he got to shoot three free throws and won it, and won it by a point. And then, of course, they didn't like that foul. There were a couple questions yeah, calls, but that, nonetheless, yeah. they're in the finals. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 115. You get the Nasdaq off 26. S&Ps are off 6. If we take a look at this Boeing news, so uh, let's see what we have here. I know. Speaking of Dow down 115, basically the Boeing got yes. Dow down 115, right? right? Uh, so a few different stories, man. It's almost like you can't keep up with the amount of stories. But talking about this one, uh, they're going to... The 737 MAX production cut has analysts skeptical of timing. So the fallout from the two crashes continued with Boeing cutting production for the plane model by 19%. So unsurprising to analysts, its timing days before Boeing was to submit a software fix to the plane raises additional concerns about when the aircraft will take flight again. So you got Boeing down, as they're saying today, 4.3% as much. And um, you have a number of different analysts here talking about what their take is in terms of the confluence of factors driving the cut in production. Uh, nothing. Ch go ahead. Yeah, so they're going to go from what 52 planes per month to 42, but 42 still might be too many. <laughs> sure, right. I mean, the bottom line is they got to be operational planes no matter what, which is I think the real. Um, so they remain patient. Talking about the analyst uh, expects them to rebound. I mean, no matter what, right? If Boeing's the only competitor to Airbus. It's only a matter of time before it yes, rebounds, which right. is pretty right. intense. But uh, regardless, we believe that with the primary cause essentially identified and a software fix set to be submitted over the coming weeks, regulators may be in, may be in a position to certify it in late Q9, second quarter of this year, uh, or third quarter. Um, and they have a number of different takes. But nonetheless, yeah, cut in production and um, just saying that, you know, one analyst saying production cut makes sense and should help resolve the crisis, but at the price of a sizable, albeit still hard to quantify financial pen penalty. Um, yeah, they're only making 52 planes, now they're going to make 42, mm -hmm. and that's a big number, 19%, <coughs> let alone everything else they're dealing with on top of things. And then what are they going to do with all these planes if people won't take uh, delivery? Yeah, I mean, you've heard very skeptical in terms of Ethiopian Air, right, might not take delivery or cancel some bids, but uh, they still have like a five to six year wait on these planes. So right. there's really no threat of that yet right. until you see somebody like a Southwest or an American kind of the workhorse of that deal ordering hundreds of planes that if they start to balk then then watch out for yeah. sure. But that not not likely just yet. No doubt. So let's go take a look at one of the targets one that looks at the Palladium as well as the uh, Platinum market. Now Palladium, um, you know, bottom line is that I wouldn't be biting on that at all. Uh, this has been, Excuse me. you know, the extraordinary run beyond belief. I mean, you know, uh, we just came down from 1600. And if we pull this back, what you're going to see, P uh, let me get the generic one. Generic one. What you're going to see, this has been, you know, an extraordinary run. And, you know, bottom line, you make an extraordinary run. And if you just go with Fibonacci, uh, bottom line is that you can have a big pullback. <laughs> sure. You know, so look at that's August of 2018. Palladium was at $815. Yep. If you happen to be watching Tiger TV, folks. It doubled, right? Yes. It not only doubled, but you never got a pullback. Yeah. You know, so $815, what's the high? You can just pull over. Yep. Call it 16 dollars There you go. Yeah. Okay. So in that case, you know, I think the question is, is that um, does, do you think platinum and palladium have some room to the upside? Um, I wouldn't touch that, uh, but I would, when you go into platinum, I'd still wait for a pullback because platinum also had a, now the difference is platinum's coming off lows with strength, oh, that's the wrong one. I think that, yeah. yeah. Just the top one will work. Or you yeah, want the I'll, I'll get the June one. So the active contract. So, July, yeah. So you can see, you know, we just had an extraordinary move here, you know, sure. finally, okay, yep. in, in platinum. You know, if we go back to uh, February, you're at 786, you're at 918. Yeah. Now, once that launched, that, that you know, what is it, 888, and then take the bottom. Yeah, it's 100 bucks. So it's... To me, this is wants to go to 988. Okay. And all I've done is take the top of the consolidation, take the bottom, add 100 bucks because that's what that was. So it's like okay. And if we go PL1, if we do get this, I think PL1 is the generic. Yeah. So if we take a look at this generic one, you know, this has been the dead dog inside these metal markets, you know, and it finally launched consolidation. 
So looks like $1,000 is game. And if you want to see something, you know, this is really cool, folks. So check this out. Um, you can go to, well, I'm going to go to the iron ore market first. Because when I start, when I was doing the gold report this morning, the, the metals, the base metals in general, are running really well. And that's a big deal. This is iron ore. You know, in iron ore, five months ago, was at $454 dollars a ton. Yeah, You're at 712. Yeah. That's a monster move. Definitely. Uh, we take a look at the copper market, and it looks to me like copper wants to make a run for 330. It's going to take out three first, but let me get the copper for you. H, HG1. And you see how this is set up. And this is when you can get true runs in the commodity market in general. And oil, of course, is already running. And you can see. You know, we've been going sideways here, and if the next leg up, get you up to 331. Yeah. You know, so we'll see how this shakes out. But when you start putting it all together, it's like, okay, so the, the commodity complex in general is running. Yeah. And if that's the case, um, that would be saying, if, let's go to China for a second, because China still runs the commodity markets, man. I mean, the, you know, when I say run, the meaning that they're, they're growing so exponentially still, you know, like, Growing an economy, you know, by six percent, you know, yeah. these is still a big number. Oh, definitely. You know, and you can look at the Shanghai. Shanghai, you know, three months ago was at twenty-four forty. They're thirty-two forty-four. Yeah, quite a run. You know, so start putting that all together, and they're using. Uh, and when they when they come in the market, man, they just come in the market, buy, 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 and then when they stop, you know, <laughs> you don't want to be in that market. Oh, right, for sure. <laughs> And I just wanted to see, uh, so GE still down like 6.5%. Boeing, as the Dow's getting, yeah, a little bit of, so it was 373 pre-market, still on three, and the VIX had a little bit of a spike, but yeah, pulling back a bit, 1375, 1350. Yeah. And if, let's go, let's go over to the palm. Let's, uh, I mean, this is almost like a sideways move. Nothing's happening over there. Buck 30. The Euro... Oh, that's, the euro saved itself again. That's good. That's good news. So the euro actually saved itself again. Now, it's interesting that the, the, the dollar is down 350 ticks, but um, this euro doesn't, looks like this, when it jumps off the cliff at 112.16, it comes right back. Now, I really like, see, see this last week? That's a, that's a nice test of a, a big bar, because the big bar that we had on March 7th was testing the big bar that we had on... November 12th. This one here is almost saying, okay, there's no more sellers down here. And, you know, we'll see whether we can get some follow through. And Theresa May, um, <laughs> who knows where that's going to happen? You know, where's that going to come Hey, up? and what, uh, I mean, we're going to have some action, I think, starting tomorrow over there because the deadline right now is Friday, the 12th. Oh, my God. That's what, yeah, I mean, so I think that tomorrow I heard something, maybe more votes or something going on. But nonetheless, the 12th is the deadline, so we'll get some action. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Dow Industrials down 99, Nasdaq off 12, S&P's off 3.5. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Uh, Dow, Dow's down uh, 104, NASDAQ is uh, off 15, S&Ps are off 4.5, and, half. and uh, you know, we've heard a lot about buybacks, but this is pretty powerful, folks, uh, understanding how much money comes in the market with buybacks versus how much money actually gets invested in the market. Yeah. So what the story's about is that Goldman considers a world without buybacks. <laughs> right. Um, okay, since 2010, corporate demand for shares have far exceeded... Uh, far exceeded demand from all other investment categories combined. Net buybacks average $420 billion annually, while demand from households, mutual funds, pension funds, foreign investors was less than $10 billion. That's in and each just, category. Yeah, so they might have combined equal more, but yeah, 10 for each category, man, and That's there's amazing. not that many categories. And so what they're talking about, you know, and this is in terms of... Uh, so Goldman Sachs strategist David Costin started assessing it. So what he's saying, the importance of buybacks as a source of equity demand, right, increases now given that equity exposure among major investors is already high, as in everybody's already invested. Right, um, right. So aggregate... Everyone's e in. Who are you going to sell to? Right. That's, yeah. Aggregate equity allocation totals 44% across households, mutual funds, pension funds, and foreign investors, and that ranks in the 86th percentile. Wow. Of yeah. the past 30 years. Yeah. Repurchases uh, have consistently been the largest source of U.S. equity demand. The strategist wrote in the note Friday, without company buybacks, demand for more shares are going to fall, would fall dramatically. Now, that can be true, but that doesn't necessarily th mean that buybacks are a good thing for the economy. That's the thing that to, right. to separate no. here completely. Right. Um, of course, you know, taking company profits and plowing it right back into not capital investment, but right. just giving it to the shareholders is going to be an instant boost, but that could have some long-term potentially harmful effects when, you know, no capital expenditures are being done. Right, because it goes into dividends versus capital expenditures. Exactly, right. yeah, exactly. you know, versus I mean, you like get company bigger? growth, right. exactly. Right. Um, you know, Steve Jobs was notorious in saying, no dividends, right. because guess what? We should be able to grow that money faster than just a dividend rate. Now, when they started accruing two hundred, three hundred billion dollars versus cash, that right. changed slightly. But the general consensus, you know, um, other potential impact from prohibiting buybacks. Talking about um, slower earnings per share growth. Well, yeah, you know, um, in terms of there's going to be 
buybacks decrease the amount of shares. Right. So, in, you know, I'm automatically the same amount of earnings grow earnings per share when you cut the amount of shares. During the past 15 years, the gap between earnings per share growth and earnings growth for the median S&P 500 company averaged 260 basis points. Wider trading ranges, a wider distribution of individual stock returns and higher volatility, they're stressing. So during the past 25 years, return dispersion and volatility during blackout windows have been higher compared with non-blackout periods. Um, yeah, and PTP multiple contra contraction. Yeah. The number, the headline number is a big one, man. That's a big one. That's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. For sure. And then we're going to, we're, we're switching gears on you. We're going to go from there to Mick Jagger, folks. So this is, uh, so Mick Jagger just had a um, heart yeah. uh, procedure, uh, valve maker. So uh, let's see. This is uh, MedTech companies uh, helped pioneer and produce the, uh, yeah, aortic valve replacement. So he yeah. had a valve replaced. So uh -huh. Edwards Life Sciences, Medtronic may see a boost in demand awareness after the 75-year-old took to Twitter thanking the doctors. Uh, one of the analysts was saying that uh, Wells Fargo, and that's truth. I mean, there's, there's no doubt. Oh, I mean, sure. You... Anytime you have a celebrity that puts uh, awareness on anything to do with health, right, it yeah. is something that... So Jagger's procedure will likely raise awareness of aortic stenosis and potentially lead to more of these procedures. Uh, which should benefit the manufacturers. Yeah. Uh, when celebrities like Jagger undergo a surgical procedure, it tends to shine a light on the underlying disease and raise awareness of the procedure itself because of the publicity it generates. That makes sense, of course. Yeah, and look at this. This is so. This procedure or this valve is 61% of Edwards Life Sciences. We'll pull that up. And okay. See what that looks like. That's um, pretty intense. Yeah. So Goldman Sachs wrote in a research note last month that it expects the worldwide opportunity to top $10 billion in revenue by 2025. So Edwards and Medtronic presented results from a pair of heart valve studies showcasing their less invasive valves as superior and equivalent to open heart surgery. Garnering praise from Wall Street, sell side analysts applaud the results that raised the competitive bar. Um, these devices have already shattered many treatment paradigms, and we expect them to continue the impact of how heart valve disease is treated in the future. Um, yeah, because it has to do, the invasiveness is, is the big thing, because, I mean, if they don't have to crack your whole chest oh, open to no get these what, things right? in here, no is, a big, what, is a yeah, big number. for sure. You know? And uh, interesting here, while Edwards and Medtronic are viewed as the key players in the space, heavyweights like Abbott Labs and Boston Scientific also make the devices. So watch out for those two coming up. Uh, if they're in that same business, then yeah. that starts to... Yeah, and so then they talk about that the Rolling Stones had, had to suspend it due to Jagger's health and that he had to have heart surgery. So let's see, Edward, E.D. Edward Life Science. Oh, there we go. Okay, Edward Life Science. EW. EW. Where are we? Okay. So you're at 187. That's quite a chart. Sure is. So we just brought, you know, this this 2013, folks, it's a 32. You're at 187. And so 60% of their revenue is in that valve. Look at that. Okay, so 2.5 billion 2015, 4.2 billion this year. And there's the breakdowns, right? Yeah, yeah, and bringing it back to even just 2018 because that's what they have down here. So you had 2. Point, uh, excuse me, 3.8 billion total, and it looks like those valves doing about 2.3 at least, but then maybe the therapy is what combines in there to be 3 billion out of the 3.8, right? Mm -hmm. I, um, and really, so yeah, that's even more when you look at the 2.3 probably being the 60. But then um, therapy. Look at, that. Look at that, it's growing. Yeah, valve. right, huge. And then ABT, let's go to Abbott. Let's take a look at Abbott. So low 56, the high is 80, we're at 78. So that's trading at highs also. Yeah, it's trading at highs, let's see. Their breakdown. Ooh, they're taking a lot of money. <laughs> now, it was Edwards, though, and it was another one. Abbott was the, the secondary. Yeah, okay. Abbott, Abbott, okay. Was, yeah, Abbott was one coming up. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's, I just wanted to see, yep. you know, but you get a company that's coming up that <laughs> they're taking a lot of money. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That's, I mean, they're, they're three times the size of Edwards yeah. in, just in terms of market cap. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was uh, Boston Scientific. That's what I was, yeah. BSX. That's a 37.90. Highest 41 for the last 12 months. That's, these are all good-looking charts, man. They're all right up there. 
And they take in uh, about ten billion. Yeah, and there you go, cardiovascular group, which is you yeah. know six point eight billion. You know, I wonder how. You know, I guess it's the salesmen that turn around into the doctors, into the hospitals to sell them, right? Because if you have four of them that are in the business, which one you want to use? Yeah, I mean, right. it's those medical device reps. I mean, right. medical sales reps across Huge. the board for sure. Yeah. Huge business, no yes. doubt. We have the uh, Dow Industrials right now uh, down 106. You get the Nasdaq off uh, 12. S&Ps are down four. If we go into the NDX 100 and take a look at the NDX. Uh, winners out here, you get Symantec up 7.5%, Wins up 2, Baidu's up 1, take it away from it, Regeneron's down 2.3, you get Dollar Tree off 2.2, uh, Henry Shine is down 2. Stay right there folks, Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so uh, we got a uh, lift out of the gate. Uh, the banking structure got it out of the gate uh, last week or the week before. Uh, it looks like uh, Pinterest is going to be uh, next out of the gate. Uh, what's intriguing here, though, is that they're seeking $1.28 uh, but that is uh, quite a 
bit below their 2017 valuation as a private company. Yeah, so if they come in at the upper range so that they plan to go public, raising that $1.28 billion, that'll put the company with a valuation of $9 billion. The last private funding round, 2017, they raised $150 million at a valuation of 12.3. So you're talking about more than a 25% haircut. Um, quite a number, man, for sure. I wonder who was the 150, right? Uh, but nonetheless, the numbers that support it, man, pretty staggering. Yeah. Printers earlier revealed $756 million in revenue from online advertisements in 2018, a 60% growth rate that accelerated from 2017, and its net loss shrinking to $63 million in 2018 from 130 in 2017. 265 million people use the digital scrapbook at least once a month. I wonder what that daily number gets down to. They don't have to release anything, really. Right. Um, but, I mean, that loss... Basically nothing if the company's worth $9 billion. That's almost a right. decimal point. And uh, if they're growing, if they could do exactly, that one more time. Exactly. You know, they have year. almost a billion dollars in revenue. Not almost, but they do it again. They'll have a billion this year. And, um, and marginally and, losing money, and they're about to get an influx of cash of $1.2 billion. So, yeah. Yeah. And what happens, folks, on a valuation like this, uh, not all the time, but the bigger makers, the bigger players, uh, very well, they have to rebase their valuation that they put in that 150 million. Sure, you're explaining. If they go public at a lower valuation, they yeah. might get a discount. Claw but doesn't mean it happened. No, That's it what I said. It'd be interesting to see who that 150 was. Exactly. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. We get Fast Market coming up next uh, with TD Ameritrade. And then, of course, we got our man Bowser Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bowser. Thanks, man. Well, go get him, folks.